Yeah, I mean, the title of this is what caught me. It's uh, the smart way to do delivery and why it's dumb. So it's just like, sometimes Ray makes these like crazy titles that are just like, what? What's he going to talk about here? So let's see what, what he's going to talk about. Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. Sometimes you think you have a really smart idea and then only find that it was dumb after all, but still in the process, learn something. Yeah, like a star citizen in general. So that at least theoretically, you're more smart and less dumb. Or as many others put it, we only learn from our mistakes. Yes. This is such a video. We're in a bit of a doldrums right now in the annual cycle of Star Citizen. The features of the last patch are no longer quite as novel. The new patch really isn't being fully tested yet. And a lot of things are being held close in order to be surprises at CitizenCon. Yep. And honestly, speculation about what Starfield is can only go so far filling in the cracks. So I thought <laughs> to try to revisit with a new slant some of the lesser attention aspects of the game in order to perhaps give them and the game a little new interest. And I decided to re-examine the lowly package delivery mission and thoughts about how to improve their profitability and challenge. Now, once you pass the... These have gotten to a place that is, like, not fun, I would say. And in my personal opinion, and I used to do these exclusively. I hope he goes into what they used to be way back in the day. If he doesn't, at the end of the video, I will. Uh, because I loved delivery mission initial single box qualification runs you get the options for local delivery runs of two three four and even five boxes and once you try them you realize that with a little thought you can come up with a more efficient way of running them so that when you arrive somewhere you aren't just there to do one pickup or one drop off but often to do both and some sure but because there's so many like look at this pick up from a bunch of random locations all in the hurston area and then drop them off all in the Hurston area. So it's a, a one planet, one planetary body, uh, or one system, planetary system uh, thing. But there's, it is difficult to make those, uh, like, like he said, a little bit of thought. Maybe I'm just extremely dumb, which is almost definitely true. But s uh, there's so many missions that it's actually somewhat difficult to create uh reasonable like routes i guess would, would they would be called times even multiples of both efficiency is obviously higher in these cases and my overthinking mind thought that with the larger the number of boxes in the pool the larger number of possibilities to create a highly efficient route oh my god so true um it is mud, mud trucker in chat this is what cargo deck should be for the hub so, like, the pickup for all these locations should be at the cargo deck. So, you know, obviously, we don't have this right now, but it, it seems very logical to, like, pick these all up at your, um, you know, your Amazon warehouse, the cargo deck, and then drop off at all these locations, right? So then you can choose your routes of, like, hey, where am I plant? You know, hey, Hurston are the drop-offs. So you could pick them. You could pick up at whatever cargo deck uh that you want to go to uh, or that you're near and then you could choose your drop off location right and then you'll get paid based off of the the distance you have to go or whatever right they've talked about wanting to do that and um it's just a system they never implemented uh on the flip side it would be pickups all around a planetary body and its moons and then drop off at the cargo deck would make a lot of sense right to do to do the other side of it and with higher efficiency, a higher profit per hour. So let's see if I can improve the profit per hour with a little problem solving. That would make an interesting video. Sure. So I took two five package missions, 10 boxes okay. total, and then laid it out on paper. Oh then my just God. pencil and a minimum distance. Look, look at this. This is a problem. It's also very cool. But you would argue that these are like, I mean, the five boxes are not really. Um, really f uh like entry levels but yeah like i used to do this too but it's gotten to a point where i think it's overbearing right am i correct me if i'm wrong you guys might be doing these missions more than me my personal feelings is this is when i stop doing delivery missions right what i uh, again i'll leave it 
till the end, but I used to do something very different. Yeah, and, and again, all this for 15K. Wow, that hit every start point before its end point. And it looked great on paper. I just had to complete it, record it, and then measure my efficiency, which turned out to be zero, even negative. Trying for a full day, I could not complete a single 10 package sequence. Why? Because I hadn't counted for chaos theory. You see, these package missions, like most missions, don't persist. They also have no 30k crash recovery. So the entire sequence had yep. to be completed in a single uninterrupted game session. Also, uh, for anybody who's listening, the, the packages that are at Security Post Korea are just like these packages that are not treated the same way. So if you if you leave, like let's say you get attacked and you're like, man, I need to get out of here before they blow up my ship, but you were removing packages from the uh, elevator. If you leave and Security Post Korea streams out, guess what else streams out? All the packages that you work so hard for because they didn't set these up for PES. They didn't set these up for any sort of persistence. And uh, it sucks. My biggest hindrance, of course, was real life interruptions. Since I couldn't bed log, I had to keep the game open and hope that I could get back to the computer often enough and fast enough JT to prevent well. timing out. Yep. I guess I could have kept a keep alive mouse macker or something going, but real life doesn't always give you that much notice. My second villain was server hangs in 30Ks. And during the entire day of trying to complete these, I had one of each. Actually, not a bad day for a typical server, and it wouldn't have been very troublesome if I was doing something that had crash protection or regular recorded successes. I mean, there's very few things that have crash protection. Uh, it's basically just the cargo on your ship and the weapons that you put on, like, a you know, whatever, you know, your inventory of your ship, essentially. That's it. There's very few things, like, missions don't. Um, right. So there's like not a lot of crash recovery. So Ray kind of brushes that off a little bit, but yeah, I mean, how many list list the things that you could do that are crash recoverable. It's, it's not a lot. My third problem was myself getting too anxious about how things were going and pushing the risk factor too high, you know, fast approaches at night on poorly lit locations. Gotcha. These weren't as much of a problem as the other things since I could return from the hospital and recover all the boxes and continue. But they did add time and reduce efficiency. But the most frustrating thing of all was I trying to push the mission system too hard. It created problems in the missions themselves, such as not all mission markers returning when I switched from tracking one mission to the other. But my biggest frustration happened at what should have been the peak demonstration of the efficiency of this idea. I rolled into Barton Flats Aid Shelter on Aberdeen to deliver two packages and pick up one in a single stop. Nice. How efficient can you ask for? But Barton Flats is a small place. There is no delivery kiosk and just one little desk that serves both as the place where pickup packages are spawned and delivery packages are to be left. And apparently being assigned three rolls to me was two rolls too many for that one desk. I was able to pick up the package that was on the desk but no quantity of changing tracking would get it to accept either of the packages being placed on the desk. So two failed missions as a result. Which was the ultimate frustration with this. Delivery missions do not have partial completion, partial payment, or partial reputation. If something ends the play session with a partially completed delivery mission, it is fully failed with the reputation hit that comes with it. And multiple accepted missions meant multiple failed missions, so my attempts to try again typically meant having to go to a different planet and becoming qualified there because I was no longer qualified to accept any missions at the prior planet. Oh my god, he failed so much he got he wasn't even able to get missions. Anyway, the first most obviously lesson from this is don't try to become hyper efficient by taking a whole bunch of delivery missions at once. But apparently I'm the only person dumb enough to try that and no, I, you're not the only person dumb enough to try it. We used to do it all the time. But I think there's they've taken it to a level where it's not fun, and it de it definitely doesn't pay. I listen. I know money doesn't matter in the game, but who wants to do this for the pay that they just offered, right? Honest enough to admit it publicly. My bigger worry, though, is with One cargo bunker. missions, which are apparently incoming. 
If cargo missions are structured like delivery missions, except bigger, they will have the same problem. Because there's only two choices. Make cargo missions huge enough that only hull seas can take them, or make them small enough that other medium to large cargo ships can take them. But in that case, a hull sea will have to take multiple missions at once just to fill up. Oh, okay, I see what he's saying. Or provide the whole breadth of all the missions possible. So, like, cargo missions are the things that every cargo hauler with a smaller ship has been waiting for. So, the the idea of take this take this mission of very high importance with this amount of cargo, which is a small amount of cargo, and I'm going to pay you a lot of money. Right? That's that was what every cargo hauler has been waiting for because the grind of hauling commodities with extremely high risk, you know, of 30Ks, piracy, whatever, and very little reward. Like you may, there's a lot of trade routes. Like how many trade routes would you have to, um, to, to do to break even before, you know, for one loss of your full cargo, right? For one piracy hit, for one 30K that you don't get your stuff back, which isn't an issue anymore, but was, right? So that's sort of the thing that we've all been waiting for. So you should have the full breadth of all the types of missions. So your whole A will be relevant. Your, uh, even your, uh, I don't know, little Aurora could be relevant, right? Take three SCU of the this really valuable i i don't know um it doesn't even have to be valuable but just very important um commodity they could just make it up um and and say bring it here and we'll pay you you know 15k just for three seu of something right be great in which case they would also suffer huge reputation loss from a single trip failure however if they build cargo missions also the the little like pick up the box and place it on things and all these points of failure. You imagine, fingers crossed, I imagine we will not have as many points of failure as we do now, right? Because you have the the shelf that could fail. You have the Amazon delivery container that could fail. You have the box that can act up, right? There's way more points of failure with these than should be with cargo missions you would hope but who knows right differently then it would be relatively easy to refactor the delivery missions in the same way with the same benefit the thing is instead of tracking the mission completion through the mission thank system you, Steve. track thank it you. on the cargo system in other words uh, each user. cargo container used in the cargo mission or parcel in a delivery mission contains on it attributes for its destination the player uh, let me move myself for a second Okay. took the contract to transport it, the payment and reputation upon delivery to the destination, the penalties and money and reputation if it is, for example, fenced at an NQA location, possibly even a delivery deadline. I think there should definitely be delivery deadlines. Uh, Morier, thank you as well. But the, the uh, I think there could possibly be more here is um, the type of commodity it is maybe right is that there might be level of commodities that are like yeah we have perishable cargo we have all those um the the deliveries that are timed the deliveries that are you can't quantum the deliveries that are uh you can't move the ship around too much and bang around right so the you know there's uh lawful and unlawful they're legal or whatever right so there's a lot of uh, uh other things that can be applied to this as well which is very cool. I, I'm not going to lie. I am getting more and more hyped for delivery missions by just like watching this. I, I don't know, dude. Because the attributes are on the container. Sorry, best we could do is make you pick them up from bunkers. <laughs> oh, no. Or parcel object entity. They will persist just like other entities and other entity characteristics. The container or parcel could be stolen, stolen back, even given to a friend or orgmate to complete if you suddenly unexpectedly had to log out or crash or wind up in a hospital bed far away. They would return from a 30K crash recovery just like... Guys, is that clicking in my headphones or is that uh, on the in the video? I hear some weird 
sounds in my headphones. Other cargo crates do. A whole range of possibilities are opened up by attaching the mission features, not to the mission system, but to the you entity it as well? itself. Okay. And that is the actual way to do delivery smarter. And now for an update on our giveaways. There's Sorry, it sounds like the, the video it sounded like my headphones when I turned the microwave on and I'm in the kitchen. The Sizzingon <laughs> themed dream video contest for the Elgato Stream Deck XL, the invaluable Whoa. creator peripheral. See the link video in the description for my details on that. And then the ship giveaways. First, we have our 10,000 subscriber. Thank you for the LDI Hull C, the colossal cargo container carrying craft or $100 Steam Store credit to be given away when the sea goes live, now scheduled for 3.20. And the big annual IA eight week giveaway for either the Galaxy Complete, the massive modular mining moving medical machine, or that banu big box bargain bazaar called the Merchantman. Or again, $100 Steam Store credit. Just be a member and you'll get entered automatically or subscribe and comment with the secret word. Dude, tons and of giveaways. And the secret word for this video is the location where I had my biggest problem trying to complete the two cargo missions. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide. All right, thank you, Ray. Again, uh, I, I didn't expect to be like super inspired and, and excited for cargo missions by watching this video. I thought we we're going to have a lot more of a... Uh, like conversation about how we thought they should be and maybe we would we would agree or disagree or whatever um for me like when i look back at the current delivery missions uh well they're not even the current ones the ones before the current ones we used to have delivery missions that would pick up in like crusader on a crusader moon like damar and then you would fly them all the way over to like microtech and drop them off on a apartment roof right or you would fly them over to hurston and drop them off and they were usually individual boxes so you would be able to accept and cancel without too much of a uh a hit to reputation i don't even know if reputation was a factor at the time so you would like accept and cancel missions until you got the you know like five or ten boxes that were going from one place or a similar place to just Hurston or just a certain, you know, few places. So you were actually able to make like some normal routes that weren't just too overbearing. Like, dude, all those lines on your piece of paper was that, that is, I think, like you even said it, somebody, uh, you know, I'm the only one crazy enough to do this stuff. It may be right. Like, I, I think that that would be kind of overbearing for your average player, right? Where you might want to do it because it's cool for a video or you find that fun. Uh, you know, I kind of find those fun too maybe but not to that extent and uh yeah i just don't see myself doing them but for for cargo missions well we have so much more like hands-off options but i think one of the things that he touched on that i thought were really cool that was really cool is the larger ships the idea that you can take multiple missions because you can carry um a significantly amount uh, more uh, like larger amount of SCU. So a whole C or a, uh, a, a Crusader C2 or a Caterpillar, right? Might be able to take multiple missions from uh, a Crusader location over to a Microtech location. And the thing is, is you're not doing it one box at a time, right? You're going to go to a console most likely. There's no way that we're not going to see these... Um, these being done at the admin offices, right? So you're just going to be moving a bar uh, over. And then, uh, I mean, my guess, if I was to guess what the UI interactions would be, my guess would definitely be the um, very similar to the experiences that we have with maybe Jump Town, where the game recognizes that you sold cargo and then gives you the bonus if you have the mission, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be interesting um, when it comes to that is what are what's the what's the interactions uh, going to be? Is it something there's no way we're going to be individually moving boxes onto a platform or something or maybe right with freight elevators? They did say cargo missions are dependent on freight elevators, right? So maybe that's a thing. I forgot about that part. Yes, and the JT bonus doesn't work 70% of the time. Definitely a point of failure, right? Uh, Malarkey, by the way, thank you very much. And there was one other one um, that I missed. Trader, thank you for your prime. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for the hype train. Very nice. But the, um, yeah, it, it's, that's the part for me where 
I think a lot of people are focused on, oh man, uh, piracy, piracy, piracy with these trade runs. But all these trade missions do is create a situation where there's not this meta like commodity run like we currently have with gold from SMO at 10 and SMO 18, right? It's straight up. You choose where you want it, like the company you want to work for. So Ling Shipments, I believe, is from Crusader. Ling will give you missions uh, around Crusader to drop off, or it will give you missions that are from Crusader to other locations or whatever, right? There'll be all sorts of Redwind is the Hurston one and so on, right? And Redwind also has some of those more seedy delivery missions. So this is an opportunity to completely revamp the entire system. And personally, let me know if what you guys think. I personally believe the one eighth SCU boxes need to go away completely. And I, I, I get the vibe that CIG feels the same because they're not addressing them with PES or anything like that. So this might be the step that takes and gets rid of all of them, right? Um, but we'll see. Uh, this is uh, the uh, whatchamacallits here. This I'm moving my cam back to its spot. But these are where is uh, where's cargo? So there's seven different types of hauling. You know, there's a bunch of levels, but yeah, these are you know kind of what they're thinking. I don't think we should we should look into these too much, right? But there's different types of hauling missions. One is showing individual boxes. One is show showing a hull A or B. One is showing a hull C, D, or E. Uh, was there also courier missions? Yep, there's also courier missions here. But again, we have to remember, these are all missions and... and um, things that were shown before the gameplay is developed. So it's very difficult to look at these and go, this is what it's going to be like. You just have to get a general idea of some very vague direction of what they want to go in. So it, it, it's hard for me to look at that and go, yeah, this is good. We like this or whatever. Because I, I don't necessarily think that that's something that you can put a lot of uh, weight into, right? At least that's how I feel. But for me... Um, yeah, I, I, I just want to see, I want to get back to where we're moving cargo sensibly and where we're moving cargo that smaller ships feel valuable, but larger ships also feel value, right? So, hey, you know, we got, and, and it's always dependent on, I don't know if random is the right word, but dependent on, you know, the, the different factors, not just, hey, this is valuable cargo, uh, and that's why it's worth a lot of money, right? Like, there's no reason why extremely low-value cargo, but that is really wanted somewhere, uh, shouldn't pay you a lot of money to deliver it to someplace, right? So, I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but it's a mission type that I think is so important for the future of the game. The, the the livelihood of the game, right? In the sense of when you're when you're looking around the world, we should see every time you go to a space station, every time you go to a landing zone, you should see haulers coming in and out. Right? Like it should be busy. Uh th these should be the the lifeblood of the game. Right? The, the game should determine that there is a here, I'll say it. I don't want to see cargo hauling come in without quantum, but it's going to happen. And that sucks, right? Because you really want to see quantum go, there is a deficiency of this thing here. So we're going to start doing some very highly paying cargo hauling missions for them. Right? So the, the hauler isn't risking their money. They're risking their reputation on being able to get the job done or not. And uh, I just, that that's that's where I think the life of these missions is just going to thrive and people are going to love them. But 
the initial implementation, uh, how are they going to do that? Is, is it just going to be random? Probably. But yeah, dude, I really want to see these and I really want to see them do well.